Hey, Simon, could you please unmute yourself? All right. Much better? Can you hear me? Perfect. Much better. Awesome. I can hear you fine, Simon. <laughs> I bet you can. All right, well, let's go ahead and continue. So thank you very much. Today is February 8th already, guys. Can you believe it? Wow. wow. And this month is going to go super fast. So we're going to switch it up a little bit. So let's go with our mission for uh, international. So Bob, take away. It's to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. I remember when there was only three of those. Yeah, right. Amazing. All right, next slide. Rosie. <laughs> With a mouthful of things. Had a girl, Rosie. There we go. Okay. <laughs> the real estate company of choice for agents and their customers. Yeah, that's, right. Right. that's the vision. Awesome. Next slide. And let's go with uh, Steve Gottlieb. Uh, I'm getting everyone with some food in there. Yeah. Our values are not family and then business. Absolutely yeah. awesome. Next, and our beliefs. Fred Howard. Win win or no deal. Integrity, do the right thing. Customers always come first. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. Creativity, ideas before results, teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust starts with honesty, equity, opportunities for all, success, results, and people are our beliefs. Yes, we are. Yes, awesome. All right. And then let's see here. Our loss. <laughs> <laughs> a technology company that provides a real estate platform that our agents, buyers, and sellers prefer. Yeah. Keller Williams thinks like a top producer, acts like a trainer consultant, and focuses all its activities on service, productivity, and profitability. Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Next slide. All right. So let's uh, give uh, Sean a Really quick, a warm welcome with her. I'm saying just a couple of little things. And thank you again for sponsoring and providing us with the amazing uh, one for KW Cares. Yeah. Part of the group. So please always speak to me when you think of home arts. I'm always here to help. Um, and that's all. Just that I appreciate your culture and your support throughout the years. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. All right, next slide. All right, we're going quick here, Mr. Fred Howard. Oh, that's me. That's <laughs> right. That's right, baby. Thank you so much. Who's out of this? Well, I thank you all. I have something that I wanted to share with you. Listen, we are almost in, well, we're in February, right? Yes. How many want to be successful? Right here, right here, right here. 
All of you should be raising your hand. Come on. Come on. So let me let me let me do this. Let me do this. I want you to do this. And I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna leave. Leave you guys alone. I want everybody right now to raise your right hand. Okay, keep it up. Simon said. Now, now what I want you to do is I want you to raise it up higher. Then let me ask you a question. Why did you do that the first time? I'm going to leave that alone. See? He's not going to leave that alone yet. See, see, you understand? We always, when I said raise your hand, you raise your hand. But when I said raise it higher, you can raise it higher. Guess what? The bar you set for yourself is the bar you set for yourself. Yeah. Go for it the first time. Don't, don't do it halfway. Okay? You got it? No, I'm done. No, uh -oh, uh -oh. We're, we're not done. You're not done. Not with you yet. Uh oh. Yeah. Carlos, what'd you do? I, no, okay, go ahead. Not, with Carlos, yes, yes. This is all about just you and I. Yes, sir. Let's pretend that none of the agents are here. Let's pretend that Manny is not here for a minute. Okay. okay. Let's just pretend. Okay. You and I are just having a candid conversation. Okay. And uh, the, the candid conversation is. Fred, you know, I'm struggling right now, uh, trying to just cultivate opportunities. I need some advice. What what angle, what opportunities do you see that I can be pursuing right this minute? Well, first of all, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What are you thankful for? Uh, what am I thankful for? Well, first and foremost, health is the number one. So... But I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful that I can have this awesome, you know, career in real estate. Oh, okay. So yeah. um, you have a commitment to your family then, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. That's a, somewhat your big why. That's one of my big whys. Yeah. Right. And if you don't do what you should do, then. Yeah. The consequences, different. right? Is I got bills. I got things that I have responsibility so I need to take care of those so let me ask you a question has there ever been a time where you needed to pay a bill and you didn't have the money absolutely yes but the bill didn't become late because you made a way for it to happen right absolutely that's but that's the same way as if with your real estate career if you want to fund your big life it goes back to my race that if you want to fund a big life you have to raise your hand all the way to the top you have to stay committed to what you're committed to. And in real estate, I'm sorry to say, Simon, it requires you to work. It yeah. requires you to spend some time in the business. It spends some time with you calling people, letting people know what you do. Yeah. If you don't like Facebook and Instagram, still do it because in the end, it'll take care of itself. But it. what you have to do is you got to pretend like every day you have a bill that's due that you need to pay. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. What can I say? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I thought the money just showed up. Then it said, money don't grow on trees. Well, before, before, before you leave, I, I just... So before you get off the stage for a minute, I just want to throw it back at you. Uh, what are the challenges? What are the obstacles? What are you seeing right now? And let's be open and transparent, folks. I want to be crystal clear on that mission, right? Because we're one team and we all want to succeed at a very high level, correct? I know I do. I know many does. I know Jennifer knows. I know uh, Carlos and I know uh, Fred and the yes, staff. We're here to support you. But you gotta, you got to raise your hand, right? <laughs> raise it high so we know we only know what we know. We don't know what we don't know, right? Mm -hmm. And if we don't know, then how can we serve and how can we help, right? So please make sure that you raise because we're here to support you 100%. Okay? Are we all committed? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? And here we go. Everybody raise their hand. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. By the way, we didn't we didn't role play, we didn't script. I just kind of threw them in old. here. Yeah. And I might do that with any of you. So be prepared. Be really prepared, all right? Because I might get a Cheyenne up here and maybe do a little role playing. 
<laughs> can, I, can I be open with the uh, with the feet? Okay. So Cheyenne and I will will have uh, consulting appointments, and I'll, we'll just start having random conversations. <laughs> and then I'll throw it in. Let's role play. And then she gives me that 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 look. Like, <laughs> really, Simon? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, let's role play. So you know, again, it helps. But I know sometimes it feels a little uncomfortable to do so. Believe me, we have to constantly role play, right, Benny? <laughs> we have to do that as team leaders as well. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable when our coaches are telling us, well, let's go through this scenario, go through that. So we as, as leaders, we do the same thing you're doing. We're just doing it for you or you're doing it for the consumer. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So again, we're all together. Right, Carlos? Right, Benny? Yes. Absolutely. All right, let's continue. Next slide. <laughs> All right, so let's get uh, Carlos up here. Is this a video on the, uh, so take it away, uh, Natalie. The last year has proven to me that command has really become an amazing tool. You know, I had a lot of anxiety about moving the entire database. We have about 3,500 people in there. My admin accomplished it in like half an hour without any hiccups whatsoever. All of the tags came over beautifully. All the information came over beautifully. I'm one of those agents that I live within my database. If I'm working, I am either on my laptop in command or on my phone in command. The thing I really love about the mobile app is it's an essential part of me working in the field. I go and show a client a house. Immediately upon saying goodbye, I'm in the app. I am making sure that all of their contact information is in there. If there is something that I need to do for them, you know, in the old days, I used to send myself an email or I used to, you know, jot something down on a piece of paper. Now I'm just doing it as a task within commands, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but when we talk about the number of things we do as realtors every single day, any second we can save is really essential. One of the other things that I really love about the Command app is the ability to go in and take a quick look and see who's been looking in the Consumer app in the last day or even in the last hour. That is something that has become an unexpected part of my daily routine and it's actually the best part because it lets me know without question who I need to talk to as soon as possible that day. I would really suggest just start working within commands. They have developed a fantastic ecosystem that is a pleasure to work in. I couldn't possibly be happier with the database. Please give it a try. Awesome. Beautiful. All right, Carlos. So let's let's chat a little bit about command, all right? So, uh, and this is for all of us, right? Because again, how do you get to the next level of your business, right? <clears throat> Bob, what do you need to do right now to generate opportunities? Talk to human beings about real estate. Okay. You know, pre preferably ones you know and you know like and trust you. Absolutely. What else? Anyone else? What else can we do to generate opportunities? We have a boy here. You mean to what was the question to how to get more leads? Yeah, or opportunity. <laughs> how do you cultivate opportunities? How do you cultivate? You know, uh, Bob was saying, you know, pick up the phone and start making calls. What else can we do? Marketing. Okay, marketing. Absolutely. Or those Absolutely. Maybe, uh, call your sphere. Call your sphere. Yes, absolutely. What else? Social open house. media. Open house. Who said that? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Open house. Yeah. Where's the good Tim? Yeah. You yeah. Get that. <laughs> and the wings and yes, Manny. I was gonna say if you are using command and all of all of you should use command or any similar tech, um, you can assign uh, neighborhood campaigns monthly or bi-monthly to your contacts so they're gonna get touch from you on a regular basis. And you can spend or invest 30 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks or more, or whatever a month, and do uh, Facebook ads and get tons of leads 
from those apps. Okay, <laughs> those apps. Instead of paying to Realtor.com, Zillow, etc. Not that those are not good, but it's a bit more affordable. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you took that right out of my my mind. Yeah, that was it back to you. That one's <laughs> worth the worth the problem. That was the whole the, that was the whole purpose of why I had Carlos up here. So um, here, this one better. Um, the importance of the leverage that we have, right? The leverage that we have. And the leverage, you know, Carlos, if I was a newly uh, licensed agent, what conversation would you be telling me to do right now? So first thing would be getting your database into command. Yep. So you can literally hit- Did you hear that? Pause for one minute. What did he say? Can you repeat that again, please? Absolutely. That's the first thing you should be doing. Not doing all these, I got to take a $1,000 photo shoot, right? I don't have to go spend $1,000 on marketing right now. Focus on the little things to create those opportunities, right? Carlos, what else should we be doing? Once you have your database in there, we're going to set up a follow-up campaign. Okay. Uh, so 19 to connect, and these are for people that you are not in a, a relationship with, meaning if you call them, it still pops up as numbers, right? Um, the people that are in your MET database, your sphere of influence, when you call them, they know who you are, they know a little bit about you. Your name actually is saved in their phone, right? Um, so getting them on a follow-up campaign, 19 to connect, building the relationship, 36 to convert. Um, the MREA tells us that you should be converting at a 10 to 1 ratio, meaning every 10 people in your database, you should be getting one piece of business, whether it's from them or a referral, if you're communicating with them 36 times over the course of Pause months. for one minute, Carlos. Did you hear what he said? Head. No, no, no. <laughs> I ran <really> <laughs> Okay. All this is coming out of his mind right here, but he says you could be getting at least one opportunity from that. Out of every about 10, ten people who know, like, and trust you. Absolutely. Did that change from 12 to? No. It okay. Just, it ratio. Got it. Thank okay. you. Okay. So if we're struggling trying to find opportunities, here's one avenue in time we can focus on that. <clears throat> what else, Carlos? What else should we be doing? Um, once you do that, consistency. That's the key, right? You know, it's cool. You regenerate it today. What are you going to do tomorrow? You know, it's all about that consistency. What you do today will affect your business three months from today. So keeping consistent with doing the activities. Yeah. But who is very consistent on a on a daily basis? Bob. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be honest. He, he's consistent. He shows up. Okay. And that's awesome. And I have to commend Bob for doing so because he definitely is very consistent. I have now, the base, Simon. Yes. <laughs> Did we just <laughs> talked about that a little while ago, Kat. You were just showing that. Yeah, it was a bay, right? In addition to Bob's consistency, he also opens it up to everybody. He's literally in here 9 a.m. Monday through Friday, ready to, to lead you. You know, and it's usually an empty room, but he's still here doing the things, right? So Say that again. He's still here doing the things. It's an no, empty room. Little piece. Of room. <laughs> yeah, it's an <laughs> empty room in here. Okay. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, if you really want to find avenues and how you can succeed, is one is the involvement of the daily activities. Is what I call the money activities. Okay, that leads to those opportunities. That leads to those appointments. That leads to writing contracts, that leads to open escrow, that leads to close escrows, and that leads to commissions in your pocket. Okay? And if anybody wants that formula, give us a call. It's literally in the book. We're not just making this stuff up, which we could, but it's, it's literally in the book. There's actual statistics around all of the things that I'm saying. We can literally break it down. You tell me exactly how much money you want to earn this year, I can break it all the way down to how many appointments you need to go on per month, yep. per week, even how many people you need to add to your database and your sphere of influence. Imagine that. Imagine that. If you, we always talk about we don't have that magic wand, that magic pill, that magic sauce. Here it is. Here it is. Now, who is using command at a high level or at least penetrating a little bit of command? Raise your hand. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. That's a warm heart. My heart is jumping out to right now. No, seriously, folks. The goal is to help you succeed, right? There's a gap 
And ultimately, that gap is what Bob is preaching, what Fred and Carlos and myself have been preaching, is to get you to fill in that gap, is the activities that lead to those opportunities. Who doesn't want to make 100000 plus a year? Raise your hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So let me let me throw this at you. What if I was to give each and every one an opportunity where I say I have that card that has the seller's contact information and they're motivated from one to ten, knowing that they're very motivated. You just got to sell them on your on your value proposition to lock in the listing. Who would go on that appointment? Yeah. Absolutely, right. You can create those opportunity, folks, when you connect with more people, right? There's a shirt that says it's a contact sport, right? It's not football where I'm going to put it in with someone. Okay, like, how's that football back over here, Steve? Okay, nice throw, by the way. Okay, but the contact sport in the real estate realm is very simple. It's a simple process is the more people that you're connecting or you're having real talk with someone that opens up the opportunity does that make sense mm -hmm. okay all of your beautiful people in this there's no reason why you can't charm people to have a conversation i can't promise you i can't guarantee that you're going to get an appointment but are you asking for business Think about that for a quick minute. Are you asking for business? When I have a conversation, you know, no one knows you're in real estate, okay? I don't know any of you are in real estate. I know because you're here. But if I'm out in the streets, I don't know if you're in real estate, but I want to get to know someone. And I'm curious. I'm like, curious, George. I want to know what you do. Then I can feed from there and then introduce what I do. And now I have an opportunity to get my business card. Does that make sense? Yeah. Remember, it's a contact sport, right? Now, what Carlos is uh, stating is the command platform is the leverage. That's you like your virtual assistant without being a virtual assistant. Leverage it. When you become a very high successful real estate agent, now you can hire a college student to do the database for you. Okay, but we got to get you there because command is a very robust platform that helps with opportunity, as many was saying earlier. Okay, Stacy State said it a couple weeks ago too. Okay, Gary Cameron has said it. Minimum that should be on your database is what? 201. 201. See what happens when you put 201. And if you get one or two leads from it, that leads to an escrow, congratulations. Now let's just stay consistent, right, Bob? Stay disciplined in it because we all have bills to pay, right? Right. Okay. We're not privileged to be even with our parents anymore, right? <laughs> so... In that sense, you know, let's let's make it a fantastic 2023. Are you all with me on that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Proud of you guys. All right. All right. Go team. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> all right. So a couple uh, updates here. So build a 100,000 pipeline in the next 90 days. It's a uh, it's a free course. Just a scan. Uh, it's three hours, it's free, gain a, a deeper knowledge of how you can utilize, implement command to build a successful business and get closer to closing a deal. Set up your KW uh, marketing, identify within command, upload contact spheres, just as we are preaching. So, okay, those um, <clears throat> had to come out of my mouth or Carlos's mouth, you know, hear it from other experts that are doing this at a high level. Make sense? And how much does that cost for that course? Uh, this class here? Yeah. It sounds expensive. It's very expensive. F-R-E-E. -E, that's dollar sign for you. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Also, it's good to scan that because that's the direct link to Linktree for KW University. So we've got yes. all of the free classes. So absolutely, you might want to scan it and save it to your uh, save it to your phone so you have access to it all the time. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. Let's uh, let's build that uh, pipeline, right? <clears throat> all right. Next slide. All right, so some of the things that command can do is their designs, holiday graphs, Black History Month, the big game, February 12th, Valentine's Day. Ooh. Valentine's. Yeah, right. I know how many times. Oh, <laughs> President's Day. So some of the things. So, Carlos, tell us a little bit about these uh, designs. Where can they navigate this? So it is a applet on your command platform. You can use this to do uh, social media posts, um, both Instagram and Facebook. You can have it set to automatically post for you. You can do campaigns, you can do email blasts, all from designs and campaigns in command. So highly, highly, it's high leverage. Um, anybody that's used to using Canva yes. for like your marketing stuff, it works very, very similar to Canva. Um, if you do already have a Canva account, you can actually download the PDF and then upload it directly into command and then be able to edit it and use it there as well. So, yep. Beautiful. Awesome. All right, next slide. <laughs> All right, so Carlos, uh, Tech Thursday. So every, uh, every Thursday at uh, 2 to 3 p.m. here in the training room. Carlos, what do we do here? We do everything. Um, right. We've been diving into command and um, bring your questions. Um, I highly encourage you guys, if you're going to come to Tech Thursday, ask some questions for me. Let's dive in and let's actually like workshop the things. Um, the only way to be able to develop questions is to actually get into command. So dive in, find your questions, let me know, and we literally go through it. And every week there's different ahas. Um, and I literally go around the room and help you guys through whatever obstacle or obstacle you're facing in command. So, so from the little things to the big things, right? Absolutely. No question is too small. Right. And make sure you bring your uh, your computer as well. Okay. That's the way you can dive deep and hands on on it. So, awesome. Thanks, Carlos. Next slide. All right. Uh, we have the uh, color of real estate, February 23rd. Register at kwlearningcenter.com. Uh, it's being uh, spearheaded by Head of Inclusions and Belongings, Julia, and that's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So mark it uh, February 23rd. Next slide. All right. Is uh, Ben, Ben Shu here? here. Huh? Yeah. He walked out? Oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. What about Grant? Is Grant here? All right, well, let's go ahead and. Patrick is here. Do we put Patrick on the spot? Thank you, and what a surprise to be up here today. You know? But you gotta, you gotta take the opportunity when right. I can here, yeah, you know? So, I know you, all of you are eager to work, and uh, I'd be happy to sit down with any of you and uh, go over your farm area, find out how to optimize that farm area. And then also, we have a fantastic training coming up for you guys. Uh, so, me and Carlos are working together, and we are going to teach you how to use command to your advantage and to actually generate leads via command and title toolbox together. So that training is coming up uh, in a couple of weeks and we'll have the flyer for you soon. So we'll be promoting that shortly. Uh, other than that, I'm here for all your title needs. Before you uh, get off the stage, uh, Patrick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not necessarily test you, but we're gonna role play a little right. bit because right. again, you know, we had an opportunity uh, last week, I believe, with Maria in escrow. But now, just really defined for some of the agents don't, don't understand the ins and outs of title and what the 
purpose of title and what's the reason that title is connected in real estate. So mm -hmm. if you can just give us a tidbit of what title's uh, job is and why is that incorporated in real estate? So essentially the way I like to explain it to my agents is that title is important because we basically are insuring against any future claims against the property. So when you're buying a property, you don't want somebody to come back from the past making a claim or stake against your property. So basically we go in, we do the research beforehand to make sure that there's no liens, that the that title is clear, there's no other family members that are gonna come up and basically make a stake at that property. Uh, and what happens, uh, when we do a title search, we search to make sure that if any contractor had done work on the property in the past, we make sure that that they have been paid already. So they're not going to come back and make any plans for you. So you're you're basically paying for that peace of mind. Love it. Yeah. Any any general questions that you want to ask right now on title? All of you know what title is. Okay. <laughs> now we do. This is it's a specific question, but do you guys also do postcards and things like that that we can send directly through your company or? So there's certain things that title can and cannot do right. due to SB 133. And unfortunately sending postcards that is one of them. So we can do labels. We do have tools that you can create pieces like that, like mm -hmm. through uh, agent one. Yeah. Uh, so if you're interested in something like that, please speak to me after the meeting. And uh, if in nothing else, I'd be happy to point you in the correct direction. Uh, but yeah, we do have different tools that could help with that. Uh, for your marketing, we have Agent One. Uh, we have Title Toolbox for pulling different types of leads. So there's always a way to get the agent what they want. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to throw a little wrench at uh, Peter. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing Patrick is super humble and you know he 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 can he can take it. He can take it. <laughs> Patrick is a good guy. You know, but he definitely comes and shows up, you know, and that's what uh, makes you uh, awesome and amazing. And I know a lot of the agents uh, will testify to that. So the question here, Patrick, that I want to just throw at you is let's say that the scenario is I'm going for a uh, opportunity to uh, list a property. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been in communications with the uh, with the wife, and then says that my husband passed away last year. Right <clears throat> now, I want this listing. Mm -hmm. So the question here is: Can I just get the listing signed? What What is the protocol and the procedure when there was a you know, significant other that passed? Both were on on title. Mm -hmm. How do How do we go through that that challenge? So it really depends on how title is held in that scenario. Um, so if the property is held in a trust, then it's going to be laid out within the trust uh, who has the rights to the property. Uh, but if it's not in a trust, then it's going to go have to have to go through the probate process. Um, so you, you could still sign the listing agreement, get the listing agreement signed. We could open up a prelim and find out what has to be done uh, going forward from there. That's why. We always say it's super important as soon as you get the listing, open up the prelim so that we can get ahead of that uh, before, so it doesn't delay the escrow process. Yeah, good. I mean, if it's a, a joint ten joint tenancy uh, parameter, if the significant uh, other passed away, technically speaking, mm -hmm. and I think maybe uh, a kind of maneuver to that conversation is you're going to need a death certificate, right? Yeah, kind of need that the other person because. What if the wife is getting to a divorce, right? And she wants to kind of uh, sell the property, not let the uh, the husband know, right? Mm -hmm. That's the importance is if that person did uh, pass away, then we're going to need something to back it up. So that way we can clear transfer title with a new buyer because you don't want to go in the motions, right? First and foremost, are you asking the right questions when you go on a listing appointment? You know, how many people are, are on title, right? First, you do your due diligence, right? You got to do your investigations, go in there, go to real list and see who are the actual owners. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Patrick was saying, you know, the importance of reaching out to the title to get a pre lens to kind of get to see, because sometimes it only show two owners, but in essence, there might be three or four people on title. And that happens, right? See, 
that happens. So that's why it's very important to know who are the people that need the authorization to release this and delinquish this property, right? Because you need to get everyone on board, be able to sign off and agree to sell the property. Make sense? Yes. Yeah, and yes, for also needs to be original, not a copy. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, one more exciting thing that I just found out today that our company is rolling out is uh, we're rolling out what's called a snapshot report. So this is something that you could pull from us starting next month. Uh, and it's essentially a preliminary title report, but it's not the entire preliminary title report. It's gonna give you everything you need to know. So it's gonna show how titles held, it's gonna show any liens against the property and what the document number for those are. Um, it's gonna show you uh, if there's any liens against the, the homeowner the, themselves. So, Without having to pull a full prelim and waiting the two days, we're going to be able to get this to you uh, within a couple hours, you know. So uh, that's something that's going to be huge for us. Beautiful. Yeah, and I'll show you an example of it too once once we roll that out next month. Awesome. Yeah. Let's give Patrick a round of applause. Yeah. That's that's cold calling right there. Yeah. <laughs> Just, Come up and uh, you're in front of the uh, front of the uh, team. No, that's just really good. That's, that's getting in the way of good things to have. Absolutely. The opportunities is what I say. All right, let's continue. And being open to it. Yeah, that's the other thing is being open to it because he could have said, no, I, I, I don't want to. Right? <laughs> We're always ready. Let me get ready. <laughs> awesome. All right, next slide, please. All right, let's go through some uh, stats and some numbers. Next slide. <clears throat> What's going on in South Bay? So let's go into dive deep into uh, the conversation. So this is 90501. This is the city of Torrance. Um, <clears throat> the highest price point uh, sold January 11th was 1.199. Your average home price was 1,071,500. Your medium price point was a uh, million one fifty seven five hundred, up five point two uh, since uh, January. Next slide. But I thought prices were going down, Simon. Yeah, yeah right. Well, this is telling you otherwise, market. right? Yep. <laughs> it's it's what we call the limited beliefs, right? Because we can make excuses for everything. Mm -hmm. We can we can make excuses. Well, you know what? That doesn't work. I just don't feel comfortable doing this, right? And these are the things that we put in our heads. And this is why a lot of us don't do what we need to do. But if you get that out of the way and focus on what you need to do, trust me when I say this, you will see opportunity. 100%, right, Bob? Yep. Okay. You show up, you'll see opportunity. Awesome. Patrick just proved that. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the opportunity is the person that shows up. All right, we had six homes sold, uh, nine active, and we had nine pending, 90501. Next slide. All right, let's go into 90502. This is just uh, west of the uh, 110. This is by uh, Harbor City area. Highest price point single family home was 908. That sold January 4th of this year. Average uh, home price was 824,167. And a medium price point was eight thirty four five hundred, up twelve point eight percent. Again, it's going up, not going down. All right, next slide. We had three homes sold, eight active, and four pending. Four pending. Next slide. All right. So now we're going into what area? Nine zero five zero three, which is West Torrance. Highest price point was 1.3. Okay, sold uh, January 4th. Average home price was 1,179,200. Mm. And your median price point was 1,220, up 4.5%. Uh, All right, next slide. Uh, we have 10 homes sold, 11 active, and uh, we have 12 appending in that zip code. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 And it's 1.56 turnover rate. Wow. Yeah. Next slide. Now let's go into uh, 90504. What area is this? 
That is North Torrance. North Torrance, yeah. This is a, a portion of south of the uh, 405 and a portion north of the 405. That's uh, North Torrance. <clears throat> the highest price point was a million sixty. That sold January fourth. Average home price was nine twenty nine eight eight. Uh, excuse me, eight eighteen. Medium home price was nine sixty eight, up three point seven percent. Okay. Next slide. We had eleven homes sold. We had nine active, and we had seven homes pending. One point seven four. Okay. Next slide. Now we have the 90505. <clears throat> Highest price point was a million five five five, sold January 25th. Average home price was 1329952. And your medium home price in that area was a million three hundred and sixty and uh up nine point one. Nine point one. Is that up nine percent from the previous month or year? Year. 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 Okay. It's year over year. Perfect. Year over year. I heard someone else say that too. I don't know yeah. if it was Chris. Good job, Chris. Awesome. All right, next slide. So we had nine homes sold, 14 active, and then uh, 10 that were pending. So not, not bad. If we had 14 and we had 15, and why do you think we only had nine instead of the uh, 14 or the uh, 10 on this one? <clears throat> Carry over maybe? Yeah. Yeah. That's usually what happens. Right. Depending on when the uh, property was uh, accepted in escrow, will dictate if it closes that month or if it follows through the next following year, which is some of the cases, right? But what's your average? Uh, what's your average uh, close of escrow? Thirty days. Thirty days, right? right. Thirty days. Yeah. So if it falls on the fifteen where you get an acceptance, then that pushes you automatically to the following month. Yeah. That's why you'll see uh, uh, differences in uh, closed sales. Because that can also include things that closed the previous month as well. Or excuse me, open escrow, but closed the following month, which would have been in January. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. All right, next slide. But, <clears throat> all right, North uh, Redondo Beach, uh, highest price point was 3.490. That's all on January 11th. Average home was a million seven seventeen nine nineteen. Medium home price was uh, 1.6, up 23.1 percent. That's some crazy number. Yeah, anything over 10 percent is obviously in a good direction. So it's not slowing down, in my opinion, when it comes to prices. Instead of going down, it's still staying consistent and still going up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good fact to know. <clears throat> All right. Next slide. We had seven sold, 11, excuse me, 21 active, and then we had 12 uh, pending. North Redondo. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Now we have uh, South Redondo Beach. We have no data. Nothing sold. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing happened. And it's down 100%. <laughs> wow. <laughs> South Redondo, it's, it's tough. It's tough yeah. in South Redondo. Interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to water stuff. We had nine active, yeah. two pending, but nothing sold. Oh, wow. wow. So interesting, right? Interesting yeah. facts, you know, that uh, South Redondo, and you would think that South Redondo, there was a lot of activity. You've got the uh, Redondo, uh, uh, Redondo Beach up here and all this activity there. But uh, numbers numbers don't lie, apparently, right? So yeah. we had zero, nine, and two. All right, next slide. All right, now let's uh, dive into uh, Hermosa Beach. So uh, I think that's incorrect. Yeah, that's uh, one, one, yeah. one property sold. Yeah. Well, maybe it was. <laughs> that's an interesting because do you guys know what uh, land value in Hermosa averages? Land value. Property the property land value. value. Land. Like if we were to uh, tear down the existing uh, home. And we were just to sell the land. What do you think the average land value in Hermosa? Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. All right. Yeah. That's about right. Yes. Imagine two and a half just for land, just for dirt. You know, if you were to pick up a listing out in Hermosa or even in Manhattan, very expensive uh, real estate there. But um, I, I have a feeling this is incorrect. I don't know. It may be land, but uh, this is single family. And maybe it was a tear down, and that's probably like a three thousand lot. 
Because for most, I have very small lots too, right? Yeah. Very small lots. Maybe a thousand. You know, so I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to go with the fact that uh, it's a teardown. All right. <laughs> we had uh, two sold, 16 uh, active, and uh, five pending in the uh, Hermosa area. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting next uh, next couple of months mm -hmm. with Hermosa shells. Next slide, please. All right, Manhattan Beach, uh, highest price point, 9.8. What? <laughs> and it's not even on the cusp of, uh, yeah. not near the strand. And someone is paying almost 10 million for a home. Wow. And that sold January 12th. Now, where can you find this information and data, folks? It's MLS. MLS. What? MLS. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You can find this on the MLS and yeah. FAR. Yeah. Okay, all this information is straight from the, the MLS or your title company as well, too. They can provide you with the data as well. So, uh, average home price was 3300 Medium was 3.290, up 49.5%. Why do you think that's such a high number? 49.5%. If only one or two properties sold, it's going to skew yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Next slide. Let's see what the, the stats say. Oh, 10. Ooh. 10 homes. So we had 10 homes sold, 43 active uh, in uh, Manhattan Beach. Okay. And when we say uh, Manhattan Beach, we're talking the whole entire city. This is all the information uh, abstracted from the MLS on all brokerages, uh, all um, uh, even off-market transactions that they uh, register. There was um, eleven home, or excuse me, ten homes that sold. Okay. That's interesting. I was just talking with someone, a friend of mine who lives in the heart of Manhattan Beach, and she was just last week, and she's like, "What are you seeing on the market?" And I asked her the same. I said, "What are you seeing on the market?" And she's getting my bi-weekly stuff too, and she's like, "I just don't see much inventory on." So that's an interesting stat to see that that's the highest one we've seen out of any of them so far. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. All right, I think that uh, concludes. Next slide. Is that all. Yeah, that's it. Any questions regarding staff? Yes, sir. Well, actually, the, the big takeaway, you know, outside of Manhattan Beach, okay, is those stats that really do show that we really actually have a pretty darn balanced market. Okay. You know, don't let the, I think what happens is when we look at the MLF on active listings and we see the down arrows that reflect price reductions, we are seeing a reduction of, of asking prices. Right. But if you actually now compare the selling prices of, of, where, of where they are, okay, prices in most areas have either are actually, for the most part, pretty stable, or right? maybe even have gone up. I had this very discussion yesterday with a client, and she goes, well, according, because we're, we're watching a property and, and submitting a considering submission of an offer in, in North Redondo. And she goes, well, according to Zillow, okay, Zillow has said that, you know, the value that values have dropped yet another 100,000, okay? And I said, well, I said, I, I'm not sure where Zillow's giving all their information, but according to our information, okay? And I said, and, and so that's, I think it's real important that we as agents understand just because we see down arrows really just means that sellers are now getting real on their pricing expectations, not on the selling, you know, but the selling prices are still holding, holding pretty firm. Yeah. Okay. What is, thank you, Steve. What is one of the biggest indicators that uh, things are slowing down? It's on market. Days on market. Yes, sir. Days on market, accumulative days on market, right? Those are the big factors and indicators of properties. And what is the average um, <clears throat> average uh, close of escrow that we're seeing right now? If we're saying 30 days, is it truly 30 days or is it less or more? What are we seeing right now in the marketplace? Close of escrow or days on market? Days on market that or tribute 43 days. Yeah. 43 days on market. 42, between 42 and 45 days. Yep. 
It's either because there's lender uh, issues going on, there's a request for repair negotiations, appraisal maybe, maybe another factor, that now it's prolonging that escrow from a traditional 30-day escrow is pushing an additional 10 or 15 more days to close. And sometimes can be is what we're seeing a lot right now is more buyers, but they are subject to selling their property because they're pulling the equity of their homes mm -hmm. in order to buy their second home or an investment property, right? So we're seeing that a lot and that's stretching the COE, stretching uh, the uh, the uh, gains on market as well. So interesting facts, right? Yep. Yes, Diane. Just so that I understand it properly though. So say that you're running into those hiccups within escrow, that's still not going toward the days on market, right? That tally is no, still running. No, 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 no. Right. Okay. Yeah, thank you for clarifying, but no, it doesn't go, it doesn't contribute. If you're the listing okay. agent, once you're uh once you put it in after I believe and correct me if I'm wrong, it stops the uh, cumulative days. When you put pending, yes. So when you put pending. it on pending, when right? Yeah. On your account, on your account, no. No, but when you put it pending, right. that stops the uh, time frame of uh, cumulative days. But if it market. falls out of escrow, right. go back to active status, and then those days are then those days are so if it's uh, 30 days, then it adds those 30 days, right? That's correct. Okay. So, so if you stop, let's say, 14 days, yeah. and then you're in an escrow for 28 days, but don't close and put it back active, it's going to add those no, to the like existing. Wow. So that's why when you close, that's why they keep very tight yeah. stats when they're reporting these numbers. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and all that definitely uh, is something as real estate professionals that we should be and understand as well. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. All right. Next slide, please. Next slide. All right. So just uh, coming up events. Next slide. Is she waiting for me to say next slide? <laughs> there it is. All right. So we got the uh, real estate live meeting. That's uh, Renat. He is one of our legal counsels, part of uh, the real estate uh, risk management team. So that'll be Friday, February 10th from uh, 10 to 11. Um, actually, this one is going to be spearheaded by me. So I will be um, interviewing and, and having a candid conversation with Renat. So, uh, yeah, it'll be on Zoom. So this, uh, this Friday. Love to see all of South Bay be part of this, right? Who doesn't want to hear from the attorney? All right, okay. raise your hand if you want to hear from the attorney. I don't want to hear from the attorney. <laughs> That's the right answer, right? We never want to hear. But this one, she's our team. So no, absolutely. Our information, yeah. For information yeah. purposes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or to tell me if I won this case, yes. Yes. All right, next slide. <laughs> All right, so we got our KW Health monthly family hike. Join us uh, Sunday, February 12th, which is this Sunday. It is in Malibu, but what's so awesome about this uh, park is that, do you guys remember, what was that old uh, show from the 70s and 80s? MASH? Yeah, oh yeah. You guys remember MASH where the helicopter is landing? Yeah. Well, that's in that area where they're going to do their hike. So uh, if you haven't cool. been... Uh, and are interested, there is no uh, street parking at no cost. Uh, the address is there. It is in Calabasas area, so it is a little distance from here. But on a Sunday, there's probably not going to be any traffic. If there is, probably because of an accident. But on uh, Sunday, February 12th, which is this coming out uh, Sunday, if you want. Okay, next slide. All right, how to build your international referral uh, network. Uh, Portuguese, hosted by Janet. Uh, she is part of the uh, KW uh, Coastal in Long Beach. She'll be having this uh, uh, training or uh, mastermind class Monday, February 13th from 10 to 11. Next slide. Creating a listing presentation that wins sellers. That's Monday the 13th at 2.30. Join Holland in the training room. Where's Holland? Wow. wow. All right. So who doesn't want to have very awesome uh, listing presentation packs, right? And we're presenting. And I've seen some really cool ones out there, you know? 
because it's all about the image sometimes, right? So be uh, be here in the uh, training room on uh, Monday, 2.30. Next slide. All right, <clears throat> Christina Blue, you're invited to our buyer consultation. Who wants to have more uh, buyers <clears throat> in, in your pipeline? So here's an opportunity to hear from one of our top agents on what she does uh, effectively to uh, present her value proposition, right? And how she sells herself on that value of uh, cultivating more buyers to be part of buyer representation agreements and helping buyers into, uh, into escrow. So that's uh, this uh, coming Thursday, the 16th, here at the uh, KW South Bay Training Room. Uh, Christina Blue, anyone know Christina Blue? Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Next slide. Also, Jackie. Jackie will be hosting a training on the, the 16th of February at 12 p.m. here in the uh, training room. How to analyze two to four unit uh, for investor clients, right? Who wants to know more in the ins and outs of the financials when it comes to the income, the expenses, the cap rates, uh, return on your investment, and then analyzing these properties? Because believe it or not, there's a lot of agents that input listing, multifamily listing, but don't give us all the core information to really uh, analyze a good investment or not. Now, a good investment can be anything, right? Meaning a duplex, triplex, single family, a fourplex, right? When you go above a four unit, then you're now in the commercial realm. But there's great opportunities, you know, for your staffs or for your clients to move into one and then cultivate the revenue uh, rental income on the other two or three that come in, right? And you got a very small mortgage because you're having other uh, tenants pay your, your, your mortgage payment. So yeah, she's having the uh, class Thursday the 16th here in the training room, okay? And if you have any questions, uh, let us know. We'll be more than happy to uh, get you more. Next slide. Toss that football over here. All right. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. It's going to be a spiral. I'm going to throw first Chris at uh, first Fernando. I'm going to throw it out to Fernando. All right. So, uh, point we sent in. We're also going to have another uh, hike, which is more local here in the South Bay. Uh, Chris uh, Rivera from uh, Country uh, Cross Country. Uh, Saturday, February 25th. This one uh, does allow pets to be there. Children are welcome. Um, we start at 10 o'clock. It's probably a mile, mile and a half. And the beauty on this, because we've done it multiple times, right, Chris, is that we can either go north or we can go south. If we go north, we'll hit some multi-million dollar homes. If we go south, then we'll do uh, like Terranea, and then that takes us down to the uh, area where you can go actually swim, you know, the beach area. So it's an awesome uh, hike, Saturday, February 25th at 10 a.m. So that's a Saturday, Saturday, okay? And uh, lunch, lunch will be provided. Typically, we usually do uh, Subway sandwiches, okay? Love to see South Bay uh, core, you know, a group of people. So everyone is welcome, family and more so uh, pets and children as well. All right, next slide. And then just a quick uh, reminder, family reunion, it's already upon us next week. So the beauty, as we uh, always uh, stress, it is in our backyard, it's in the city of Anaheim. So it's not like you gotta fly out to Florida, New Orleans, it's here in Anaheim. It's a four days, it starts uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday. <clears throat> so some of the breakout sessions uh, include uh, career growth opportunities, uh, profit-wise, the autonomy of successful uh, touches, protect your profit. Next slide. <clears throat> and then our guest, uh, no speakers, is uh, Ed, Milet, and then Molly. Uh, founder and host of the uh, Game Changer uh, podcast and the author of The Power of One More. So awesome uh, keynote speakers. Next slide. And then what's so cool, three, three of our agents from the uh, South Bay are going to be uh, speaking at Family Reunion. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So 
uh, Nina Alexander <clears throat> will be uh, spearheading as one of the uh, panelists. And uh, the uh, topic is up your game, get connected with sports and entertainment. Definitely works with a lot of uh, uh, sports athletes. Uh, so this is something that you definitely want to be part of if you're going to go to a family reunion. And then the young uh, Mason and Ryan, they're the uh, commercial team that we have in the corner. Uh, they're going to be uh, talking about launch your commercial real estate career in a uh, shipping market. So awesome uh, core uh, of the agents that are going to be part of the uh, panelists for family reading. Okay. Hey, Simon, can I break in? Yes, absolutely. Hi, everyone. It's Katrina. I'm I'm home. Um, but I, I wanted to say I'm actually going to the family reunion. I'm going to be meeting up with a couple of agents that I met at previous family reunions. So we have like a whole thing set and it's going to be awesome. We've got a whole crew from um, New Jersey and New York coming in and um, I'm going to be their host while they're in town. So it's going to be pretty fun. Awesome. Thank you, Katrina. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And it's always great to network with other agents because this is the hub where we see anywhere from 10 to 15,000 KW agents saturated in the city. And you'll see them with their red shirts and all that good stuff. But we see them from all walks of life. Okay, so it's going to be an awesome event. All right, next slide. All right, uh, any listings you'd like to uh, pitch? Any needs or wants? Yes, Debbie. Have a listing um, today. Going today, it's in Ladera Heights, uh, ninety-seven feet, and it has spectacular views. Full, um, it's in the upper Ladera Heights area. Awesome. All right. You said it was ninety-four. Nine thousand seven hundred. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Well, we still have our uh, duplex in LA, twenty-nine, twenty-three, uh, Southwestern. We are talking to the um, the seller, so we'll probably be lowering the price, so we will let you know. Uh, we are going to have also a town hall in Redondo Beach. Maybe it's going to be in March. Uh, three bedroom, two bathroom. So if somebody wants uh, a, a town home in uh, North Redondo, let me know. Something that's coming up. Awesome. Thank you, Rose. Anyone else? Chris. Yeah, I don't have a list. Uh, anything that I do you don't have a list. I just wanted to remind you. I don't know if I'm sleeping okay. there or not. But just in case I'm here, we've got Super Bowl picks. Thanks. Five dollars, twenty dollars square. You need to get this filled out by Friday. So hit me up after the meeting. Yeah, that's awesome. 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 Thanks, Chris. All right. And I believe that concludes our team meeting. Oh, yeah. Well, that concludes our team meeting. So now let's uh, get started with our Super Bowl KW's Care Lunch. Uh, right. So awesome. So please make sure to uh, contribute to KW. Any donation is, is uh, welcome. That goes 100% to uh, KW Cares and the importance of KW Cares. But also, there's going to be a raffle, and then we'll announce the winner at our next uh, team meeting, which will be next next Wednesday. All right. Any questions? All right. Well, that includes our team.